Hello everyone, my name is Samantha and I'm with Empower Multimedia. We post content regarding business, academia, and entrepreneurship. Remember, if you ever need help starting or growing your business, click the link in the description for a free 15-minute consultation. Today we're going to be covering how to use Zoom. Just as a reminder, this video is strictly informational and not advice. Now let's get into Zoom. So for Zoom, you're most likely on desktop going to need the Zoom app, and when you try and log in through this internet, it'll direct you to the app. And now after you launch Zoom, you can click join a meeting to join a meeting without signing in, but if you want to log in or start or schedule your own meeting, you have to sign in. So you click that. To sign in, use your Zoom, Google, or Facebook account. You can also log in using SSO. Basically what SSO is, is for a school or company account. Um, and basically, if it's not like letting you log in through the regular sign-in, Google or Facebook, you should probably try going there if you have a school or company account. And if you don't have an account, click sign up free. And if you have a Zoom account but can't remember your password, you can just click forget and then Zoom will email you helping you log in. After you sign in, you'll see the home tab and you have different options on here. On the top, you have home, chat, phone, meetings, contacts, you have a search bar. And then on the main page, you have new meeting, join, schedule, or share screen. On the sides um, where it has the little time and date, you can also see any scheduled meetings you have. And so for new meeting, you can start an instant meeting and you click on the downwards arrow to enable video or use your personal meeting ID for instant meetings. You can also join a meeting by clicking join um, and then once you click that, you will be prompted to enter a meeting ID um, and sometimes you will also be prompted to enter a passcode. For schedule, you can set up a future meeting. Um, basically, you get to pick the time and day that this is going to happen and then it won't start right at that time. You will have to click a start button, but you will see that in the little right hand side where it says the time and date. You can also share screen. Um, you can share your screen in a Zoom room by entering the sharing key or meeting ID. And the date and time with background image, like I said, um, to change this background image, hover over the picture and click the camera icon. For upcoming meetings, it'll display the next meeting for the current day. And you can add a third party calendar service if you want to sync upcoming meetings. Now you have some other options in the upper right hand corner when you click on your profile photo. So here you can see you can add a personal note, uh, you have your settings, you can change your status to available, away, or do not disturb. Um, you can go to my profile and here you can edit your profile. Um, there's try top features which opens a web page detailing some of the most used features. There's help which will be about Zoom, the help center, and to report a problem. Um, you can check for updates, you can switch to portrait view, you can switch accounts, sign out. And you can also upgrade to pro if you are on a free account. So for the chat, you select chat tab to view private conversations with your contacts or group conversations in the chat channels. And you can access these features in the left side panel. Um, there's a search box where you can search for contact or channels, and then the arrows allow you to go back and forth between recently used chat windows. You can star messages, um, these are just ones that you would like to save for later, and then it has a starred messages box where you can find them later on. You can find contact requests, um, where you can view recent contact requests you have received from other Zoom users. And then there's an all files, where you can view your files you have shared in chats and all the files you have access to within the chat, and any saved whiteboards from meetings. There's also an option for a personal chat space and you click your name to use this. You will also see an add icon which looks like a plus button and this is next to recent. So for that, you can start a new chat with one of your contacts, create a channel for group chats or join an existing channel. And under recent, you can select a contact to view chat history and continue to chat with them. And contacts have a status icon before their name. So for example, you could see a green dot which means that they are active and anything else like that. You can also select a channel, which is indicated by the group icon before the name to view the channel's chat history and send messages to channel members. After selecting a contact or channel on the left side panel, you can use these features in the chat window. You can also see a video icon, and this is to start a meeting with the contact. If a channel is selected, this will start a meeting with all the members of the channel. 
You can click the down arrow next to the icon to select if you want to meet with video or not. The phone icon starts a phone call with the contact and this is only available if you have access to Zoom phone. The new window icon, um, for this you hover over your pointer with the contact or channel name to display this icon and this opens the selected chat in a new window. There's an info icon which gives you additional options for the contact or channel and it also gives you quick access to files, images, and start messages in the selected chat. Finally, you have your message box where you can compose and send messages to your contact or channel. You can also send screenshots, files, code snippets, audio message, and animated GIFs. You also have a phone option, and for this you select the phone tab to make calls, view call history, and play voicemail messages using Zoom phone. And for this you will need to have access to Zoom phone. Um, and here you can find a history tab, voicemail, a lines tab, uh, SMS tab, and a dial pad. Now we're going to look at meetings, and this is probably the one that a lot of people are used to for using Zoom 4. And for this you select the meetings tab and click on coming to view, start, edit, and delete scheduled meetings. And so you can click the following options after selecting a scheduled meeting in the left side panel. You can schedule a new meeting with the add icon. The refresh icon refreshes the meeting list if you don't see your meeting. The start button lets you start your upcoming meeting. The copy invitation um, will allow you to manually paste it into an email, instant message, or anything like that, and then the person you send it to will have access to the meeting. Uh, you can also edit the meeting options if you need to change the time or something. You can delete a meeting and you can join from a room where you start the meeting and have a local Zoom room also connected to the meeting. Once you've started or joined a meeting, you can access the meeting controls located at the bottom of the meeting window. And if you don't see them, you can move your mouse in the Zoom window to display meeting controls. Um, here you have different options like mute, stop video, those do exactly what they say they will. If you click mute, it'll turn off your voice, and then if you stop your video, you won't be visible to anyone. You have the invite button, which you can invite other people to the meeting, in the participants tab. If you click on it, it'll show you everyone in the meeting. And here they also have the option of raising their hand, and this is helpful in group scenarios if someone needs to say something, but you don't want everyone talking at once. You have the share screen options, um, and here you can share your screen to show everyone what's on your computer, and you can select different, it doesn't have to be your whole desktop, it, you can select just specific screens if you don't want to show them everything. You also have the chat box, which um, does what it sounds like, you just can put in the chat instead of talking out loud. You can also record a meeting, this is also helpful for business meetings or for classrooms. You can also do reactions with the reactions tab, which basically if someone says something, you click on it and can answer with an emoji. And finally, you can leave the meeting. If you are a host or co-host of a Zoom meeting, you have a few more options than a normal person would have. So for example, you can do polling where you can make, um, edit, and launch your own polls, and then people who are participating in the Zoom room can answer them. You can also enable closed caption where basically it'll give the Zoom viewers um, a written out text of what is being said. And you can also make breakout rooms. And what breakout rooms are is basically you can decide to put people who are in your Zoom room in separate smaller rooms together and you will still have the regular meeting room open. So it's just a subgroup of rooms. And then um, if you go to the more option, clicking on more will give you access to being live on Facebook, live on Workplace by Facebook, live on YouTube, or live on a custom live streaming service. And then you can end the meeting for all if you want people to get out of your room and you want the meeting to end as well. This concludes the video. Make sure you check back with Empower Multimedia for all of your business, academia, and entrepreneurship concerns. Remember, if you ever need help with starting and growing your business, click the link in the description for a free 15-minute consultation. If you have any questions, comments, or video recommendations, please comment below. Also, remember to like and subscribe.